Okay, so we thought we'd do a uh, introduction to Fusion demo um, or, or tutorial. So uh, Fusion 360 is Autodesk's um, cloud-based 3D parametric manufacturing design software. Um, it's uh, um, an all-in-one tool, so to speak. So it allows you to create 3D models, um, 2D drawings of those models, assemblies, single parts, surfacing models, um, do photorealistic rendering, animation, um, FEA and stress analysis, and also CAM and tool paths as well to get your, um, your code out to your CNC machines. So um, it's um, a, a really good application. It's, it's ridiculously priced and a lot of people are picking that up and starting to use it. So um, I thought I'd just do a quick tutorial on, uh, on how to get started. Um, this is the main Fusion interface, really easy to work with. Um, we have a panel over on the left hand side which is A360, Autodesk's cloud storage um, solution. Uh, and this is where essentially we, we save our files. They're all saved on the cloud to Autodesk 360. Um, we'll do a separate session on that another day because it's, uh, it's a whole discussion point on its own right. Um, in this case, I've got a blank file open, as we can see here, untitled. Um, I'm just going to um, talk through the interface very quickly. We have different areas of the interface that we can change to. Today, we're just going to be focusing the modeling area. In the modeling area, we have sketching tools to draw in 2D. We have creation tools to turn 2D geometry into 3D. We have modification tools to modify that 3D. We have assembling tools to assemble multiple 3D components together. And then we have construction and inspecting tools as well. Just underneath those, we have our, um, our history browser, modeling browser, which will show us our um, solids as we start um, building them up. And then right down the bottom, we have our, our history tree or our timeline, so to speak. So let's just build a really basic part. Let's start with a sketch. So let's come up and say that we want to create a new sketch. Really intuitive to work with. We can either press the Create Sketch button or just simply come in and choose one of the sketching tools for anyone that's transitioning or, or used SolidWorks or Inventor or Pro-E before. Just come up and click Create Sketch and you get shown your origin planes. Let's pick this front face to say that we're drawing a profile from the front and let's zoom in a little bit there. Um, so we're going to create a really basic uh, brake disc for a, a car, let's say, or a toy car. Um, so let's come up to our, our Sketch tab Use the drop down and say that we want to draw a line. Simply snap to your origin point, drag vertically upwards. Fusion will automatically create a vertical constraint and draw that line in vertically for you. Um, let's put a, a base dimension on there of around about 50 millimeters just to give us a, a, an element of scale. <laughs> With that line uh, selected, we can come over to this uh, palette on the right hand side and change that to a construction geometry and then we can continue to draw. We've also got a, a really intuitive right-click menu, just like the marking menu inside of Inventor. So we can gesture downwards on that right-click menu to come into our sketch tools, and we get shortcut menus for all of our other options in there. So let's go to our line tool and start drawing. Let's draw horizontally. Not fussed about size for now. Let's then draw down at a slight angle. Zoom out a little bit, draw horizontally again. Click and hold over the end there and then gesture out to do an arc. I'll show that again because it's a little bit different to how you're used to drawing. So again, pick up your, uh, your, your line tool. If you've done this in Inventor before, it's exactly the same. So we are in our line tool, click and, oh sorry, uh, we're in our line tool, hover over the end point here, click and hold your mouse button, drag out and then down. It will put you into a tangential arc. We can then let go to complete the tangential arc and then finished our closed profile. Once we have our closed profile, Fusion does a really nice visible uh, or, or visualization for us to show you that we actually have a closed loop profile. It's being shaded in orange. I'm just gonna right click and go to my sketch dimension this time and place a dimension between this line with my original construction. Whilst placing that, I can right click and choose diameter dimension to specify that I want that to be a diameter or leave it as a standard linear dimension should you want to. Let's leave it linear and place that at 15 millimeters. I'm going to do another couple of dimensions here and say that I want this one to be 40. I'll place another one in. Notice this has just come out of the way a little bit here, so I'm just going to select it and make sure that it's locked vertical. 
Okay, so we can place dimensions and constraints much like we can in normal Inventor. So again, that just skipped out to the side there. So just select the line and say that you want that to be vertical. Let's continue to add some more dimensions now. Let's go back down to sketch, hover over and dimension. Let's go this one. No, we're gonna put that up to 70 millimeters. Let's do an overall rough length there of around about uh, 200 mil and then maybe a thickness here and maybe do that thickness of roughly, oops, from here to here, roughly about 12.5. I'm happy with that. At that point, we can say that we would like to finish that sketch, or we can quite simply come straight up to the creation tools. We still have creation tools on our right click menu, by the way, but I'm gonna say create and choose revolve. Now, what revolve will do is it will take our closed profile, which is the orange shaded area, and it'll allow us to revolve it around an axis. For example, I can say create, revolve, choose my profile. We have our dialog box over here on the right hand side. So choose our closed loop profile, choose our axis, and Fusion will rotate the shape or the profile around the axis for us. We can change any of the type ins over here or grab the visual. Um, utility or visual gizmo here if you like to change that should you want to we're going with 360 degrees that gives us our 3d shape once we have that 3d shape we can start adding more information to it so again we can pick up this top face and we can say that we would like to create a sketch on that top face i'm going to just zoom in i'm going to use my line tool to um, snap a line let's pick that line up and say that we want to go um, point to point between those two uh, intersections there. I'm going to select that line and turn it into construction so it's ignored as part of any other features. I'm going to grab a point and place that point on the middle of this line here and then I'm going to stop my sketch. If I go to create my create options now and come down and find hole we should be able to pick up the point that we placed during our sketch and this will allow us to place a hole on that point. Now, we have a number of different types of hole, much like we have inside of Autodesk Inventor Professional. So we can just say that we want a simple counter bore hole. Again, because we're very um, visual in Fusion, we can literally grab our, um, our gizmos here and, and play with them. But for me, much like we can in Inventor, we can come on and choose exactly how we want this hole to work. So we can say that we want our, um, our hole to go through all of the geometry. I want the main diameter of my hole to be, um, let's say we want it to be um, uh, an M15. I want my tip angle to be 118 degrees. That doesn't really matter because we're going all the way through. We're saying that we want the counterbore depth to be um, five millimeters and we want the diameter of that counterbore to be, um, let's say M20. Extents is gonna go through everything. And we can press okay. That goes ahead and creates my hole. No thread on there as, there as yet, but we can place a thread on there if we should want to. Remember earlier, I said that we have a history tree or a timeliner. In Inventor Professional, it's over here, but on Fusion, this browser is just showing you your sketches and your bodies. Our timeline in Fusion is down the bottom here. And we can see that much like in Inventor and other parametric tools, we can roll back to each individual sketch or feature. These can be double clicked to be able to edit them. Whilst we're editing them, we can come back and choose how to work with that component. I've got a hole there. Let's say that I would like to create a, um, a thread on that hole, pick up my face, and say that I would like to place a metric profile on there. Now, what Inventor Fusion will do, or sorry, what Fusion will do, not Inventor Fusion, that's old terminology, is Fusion will change the, uh, the diameter of that hole and actually modify the hole itself so that it matches the thread. That's different to how the old inventor tool works um, because it actually gives you the correct size of the hole rather than um, um, keeping the hole too big. Once I've got that, let's say create, come down to pattern and we can say that we want to create a circular pattern. I'm picking up objects, which is my hole. I can come pick my hole, hold down control and pick my thread from the browser, choose axes, pick up my axis and say that I would like to have three of those. I can press OK 
and Fusion will create a pattern of those three components. From there, I'm gonna say that I'd like to create another sketch on this top face. And this time we're gonna remove some geometry. Let's say that this is gonna be um, um, a brake disc for a, a race car or, a, or something like that. So we might wanna make this nice and light. So let's come in and, um, and place some arcs. So if I come down to my sketch tools and say, let's do a, a basic three point arc. I'm not overly fussed on, uh, on accuracy. So I'm gonna do a basic arc here and then I'm gonna place a standard circle, center point circle, and I'm gonna place it on the start of this arc and place that center point circle at a 10 mil diameter. With that, I'm gonna say that I would like to um, pattern in the sketch mode this time. So we can say sketch, we can come down to circular pattern within the ske sketch, like, much like we can inside of Inventor. I can pick up my objects, pick up my center point, and say that I would like to pattern around. In this case, we want to go for an angle, and I can just visually drag that until it looks about right. So I can say that I want to go for a total of um, maybe about uh, 50 millimeters or so, or 50 degrees, a little bit too much, let's go for 40. That's perfect, and maybe have about eight of them throughout there. Once I'm happy with that, I can say, okay, stop sketch, say that I would like to extrude, pick every single one of those, closed loop profiles, and say that I would like to create a cut extrusion, and I would like to cut through all of my geometry. Just to spin around, make sure that your arrow is going in the right way. As long as your arrow is pointing in the right way, you should see red to show you that you are cutting through. We can press OK, and that will cut all of those holes through for us. I'm gonna say that I would like to modify this component and place a fillet. I'm gonna place a fillet on all of the lower faces of those individual holes. Oops. Try that again. Modify fillet. I'm placing a fillet on all of those lower edges here. We're just gonna put a small fillet on all of those edges. And we use the top ones as well, just to take the sharp edge away from that cut. Let's just put a, a radius in there of about, not 21, that's far too big, about two millimeters or so. We could even go down to one. We don't need to be particularly big and press okay. Let's create another pattern, this time in 3D circular pattern of my extrusion cut and my fillet using a rotation axis once again of the center of this brake disc and I want to have 12 of them patterned around my part. Press okay and it will pattern all of those for us. We can finish this off and say we want to select that edge, modify that with, um, not a chamfer, a fillet. Just put a fillet down on there of around about five millimeters, maybe up that to 10, press okay. Now I don't like the size of these holes, I wanna make these holes a little bit smaller so I can put a fillet on the top there. Just like in an Inventor Professional, and any other modeling tool that's parametric, we can come all the way back in time to our original hole, give it a double click, it takes us back in time to that point. We can then change the diameter of the hole or just the bore. Let's just drop the bore down to an 18 mil and I'm gonna drop this down to an M12. Press okay, change my thread as well so that it's a 12 mil thread and then we can modify, add a fillet and place the fillet on the top edge there at five millimeters. I'm quite happy with that, that looks pretty good. And that's a really good introduction about how we can get a standard model inside of Inventor, um, sorry, inside of Fusion. Now, now that I've got that model, I might want to do a little bit more with it in that I want to create a 2D drawing of this model. Really easy to do this in Fusion, but not a lot of people know that you can. Once you've got this component, you can right click over here and say that you would like to create a new drawing. This will just simply ask me to save this component, so let's just call this disk. And we're gonna say that we just want to save this inside of my folder on A360. Let's save, give this a version, version one. Again, we'll go through A360 during another, another session to explain how this is used in its entirety. But we can basically say that we want to create a reference drawing using this break disk. 
ISO millimeters on an A3 piece of paper. Press OK. This takes us into a 2D view and it shows us a layout. We can say that I would like to look at this component from the top for my base view and I want to place my base view down just here. So it may be at a scale of um, one to three. I'm placing that view and dragging to the right hand side and pressing OK. I can then say that I would like to place a projected view of this parent view and I'd like to place one here, here, and at an ISO angle over here. Right click OK, then I'm just gonna move these views individually just to tidy up my sheet. I can select individual views and change the way that they look and feel. So I can grab this view and say that I would like to um, look at how it's um, shown on the on the drawing. So we can double click this view and say that we want the style to be um, shaded. You'll notice that this um, just flashes the screen, it regenerates and gives that a shaded view for us. We've also got the ability to create sections so I can grab um, a base view, put a section line through it, right click and continue and then place that section down like so before pressing OK. These views work exactly the same as Inventor Professional, so if you've used that tool before, you should be right at home. Let's go to Annotate and just place a few dimensions. For example, let's come in here and annotate uh, our hole. Let's annotate this top face. From the inside of the fillet. put an annotation on the fillet itself and you would continue to animate up uh, animate and annotate sorry up those uh, those different views but as you can see we can create our 2d drawings in very much the same way we can in any other CAD package those drawings can be as detailed as we need them to be with dimensions and even bill of material information if you've drawn an assembly we can output those to both DWG format and PDF format. By default, they are stored against the component inside of A360. At any time, we can go back to our 3D model and make a change. For example, I could say that I would like to uh, create another sketch on this top face. On this top face, I'd like to go in and create a, um, a slot, which is going to be a um, center point slot let's just go from here to here and draw a nice simple slot that's the wrong type of slot I want it to go end to end let's just do a, an undo create a cent center slot is what I was after let's go from there to there create that slot stop the sketch extrude that all the way through as a cut and then let's um, modify or create a pattern of that extrusion all the way around our part 12 times if I go straight back to my drawing we have a drawing we want this to update with what's going on inside of our part so I'm going to save my part call that v2 press ok takes a couple of seconds to save because again it's uploading to the cloud once we've done that you'll notice that Fusion knows that there's been a change. It's not updating things automatically for me, but it's just saying that you need to update the drawing. Okay, You need to go in and tell the drawing to update to the latest version. So we can come back up here and say, I want to get the latest version of this design. It will take what we've done in the model and now assign that to the drawing without changing any of our annotations. Really powerful stuff and stuff that you would uh, more likely see in a much more expensive and much more um, um, a, a, full, a fuller package, let's say. So it's, uh, it's really good functionality to have in here. So um, that's all I wanted to take you through on this session really, is a, a really quick how to model a 3D object or 3D component inside of Fusion, and then how to turn and create a 2D drawing of that component. I hope that's been useful. Catch you next time.